Welcome, everybody. Everybody having a good show so far? Yes. Woo! All right, well, welcome to our Lone Star Chefs of Texas James Beard House experience. Um, we had the uh, pleasure last month to go to the James Beard House in New York City as the Lone Star Chefs of Texas and uh, cook some awesome beef, obviously, and some other amazing dishes. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the experience at the, at the Beard House. Uh, we're going to demo a couple of our uh, dishes really quickly. We're going to talk about the journey, uh, who, what, why, where, uh, all those kinds of things with Chef Rick Neal is going to talk about that. I will introduce everybody. We have <laughs> Chef Kelly Cook right over here. Kelly's the current president of the Texas Chefs Association. Are you uh, Googling here in Texas. Keep on that? <laughs> no. The pastry chef it's over here. The, uh, days, Jeff Mark days. Schneider, oh, Texas State oh, Technical oh, College oh, here oh, in Waco. Oh, this gentleman doesn't need any introduction, but I'll do it anyway. Uh, lots of gold hanging inside of his chef coat. <laughs> chef Patrick Mitchell. Uh, with hey. Hey. Thank you. And then a man that kind of put this all together and, and, and brought us along on this journey with him. Uh, so we're, we're really uh, proud to be up here with him as we were at the James Beard House, Chef Rick Neal. All right. Over there in East Texas. So Chef's going to go ahead and talk a little bit about why we did this and, and, and what happened and all those good things. And then we'll kind of move along the demo as we go. Okay? You ready, Chef? All oh, right. and Morris Salerno. Well, I forgot about Mo. Is this thing so, on? So yep. Chef Morris Salerno right here. Um, Hang on. So Hang Chef Mo is with us also. <laughs> Everybody knows Mo. Uh, he is in Napa, so he could not join us. Uh, he's out in the Napa Valley um, doing some tasting, I'm sure. So With Uncle Peter. Mo. Huh? With Uncle with Peter. With Uncle Peter. Yes, Uncle Peter. So, Chef, you ready to go? All right. I'm all right, ready here we to go. go. Well, uh, thank you all for coming out today. Uh, this here is uh, Chef Morris Salerno. We brought the chef there back. He is. There, he is. Uh, there he was. Um, for him to be here. Um, oh, let me get off of that. Yeah, you can't be too close. Yeah, you no, can't I'm be too close to each other. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the journey began. Um, I called Patrick up about uh, about a year ago, and I asked him what was next in my career, what step I needed to take. This whole uh, trip it revolves around uh, mentorship. Um, Patrick said, stay your course, keep doing what you're doing. And I said, that's not good enough for me. I need to have some, uh, some game plan, step-by-step -step play, because something going on between you and me. <laughs> um, so uh, Patrick said, just stay the course. And I'm like, I, I need to know exactly what I need to be doing. And uh, that's when I called up the James Beard House and I said, what do I have to do to, uh, to cook there? And they told me that I needed to uh, take a step-by-step -step play of uh, putting a menu together, figuring out an application, finding a kitchen to cook in, finding out how to get up there, how to live when you're up there, how to eat and everything else. And uh, that sounded like a whole lot of stuff and keep a full-time job. So I called uh, Patrick Mitchell and I called Schneider, uh, Chef Schneider up uh, and Schneider. Schneider. Called uh, Chef Schneider up and um, we decided to do this all together. <laughs> Full house. I'm not very politically correct if y'all can't tell. So <laughs> say something wrong, just hold the red flag up and we'll get it corrected. Um, so that's how the team was built. Was uh, with, with these two guys, and then uh, Kelly Cook. We couldn't have done this without our state president. And of course, uh, our contacts through uh, Morris Salerno. Can we give him a round of applause? <laughs> He's out in uh, California right now representing us in uh, Napa Valley with uh, Uncle, uh, Uncle Peter. Uncle Peter. Uh, which uh, um, Uncle Peter, uh, sponsored us on all our wines for the trip. That's, that's Peter Mondavi, Uncle yes. Peter Mondavi. <laughs> yes, he's, uh, he's become family over the past year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whether he knows it or not, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's on the not side. But um, so <clears throat> the journey began um, with us putting this team together and uh, trying to figure out how much it was all gonna cost. 
Uh, Chef Patrick has traveled the world, uh, literally traveled the world cooking, and he knew a lot about the ins and outs of how to get around town and how to get from one country to another, how to get from one city to another financially as a team. So he was uh, a huge benefit on that. Um, Chef uh, Mark Schneider was uh, my, first, my very first culinary arts instructor. Couldn't have taken this journey without him. Uh, as I started this conversation off with y'all, when I called uh, Patrick Mitchell, he's that guy that I call when I'm a little confused on where I need to be in my life. Um, so mentorship, mentorship. Our state president, mentorship. I remember one time when I was looking to change jobs, I called uh, Morris Salerno up. Once again, mentorship. He spent almost an hour on the, on the phone with me talking about it. So these, uh, having these chefs in, in my life has gotten me to a whole nother level. You know, um, it, it's, been, it's been amazing. Amazing journey so far. I think we're actually uh, looking, I don't know if I can discuss this or not, but I'm going to. Um, I'm getting no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> Nothing's final. Yeah. Yeah. E easy, easy. We're looking to do another dinner somewhere else in the in the world. Oh, okay. You know, and I'll just leave it at that. But we're looking to do some more <laughs> traveling as a team, um, whether it's a competition or a cultural exchange, something along that lines, um, outside the box. But uh, the cool thing is, here's my plate. It's a uh, simple salad. Um, we did everything Texas and our whole menu. Uh, I'm from uh, Tyler. Tyler's known for um, yellow or it's, it's known for Can't roses, Tyler Roses. Uh, so we did a uh, yellow rose of Texas foam with some rose water. We got some microgreens uh, and some local peaches. And then uh, buttermilk panna cotta uh, with some black pepper on it. Um, Patrick helped me out in procuring the greens from uh, Fresh Origins. I'd like to give them a shout out. You're going to hear a lot of shout outs uh, with, the, uh, with all this stuff that we're going to be talking about here in a little bit. But uh, Fresh Origins really stepped up to the plate, shipped the stuff up to the hotel, the uh, Moxie Hotel in New York City in Chelsea was another one that helped us out. <laughs> enough said enough said um we also have um what's the name of the company with the spoons uh chef spoons chef spoons have y'all been on uh have y'all been online and uh checked out these spoons i'm gonna Put leave it up hat. here but uh it's a very 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 cool uh, spoon very memorable it has the date that we uh, cooked at the James Beard House on it with the James Beard House logo. So, kind of a really cool deal. Yeah, he's a company in, um, in Garland, and he makes uh, chef spoons and uh, does all kinds of things. I had some made up for the Malaysia competition with our logo. Uh, we just oh. had the etching on there done. And then uh, he Ooh, also has a, a color um, uh, puck that he puts in there with the little logos. Pretty wild. So this here's uh, the picture of the James Beard house uh, right outside in the morning time. When we went over there, it was pouring uh, cats and dogs, and I think there was uh, a few other things falling from the sky too. But uh, the, the weather uh, led up and uh, we got outside. Uh, I'd like to talk about the Texas flag for a minute. Uh, Bob Westbrook uh, is the uh, president for the uh, TRA in, uh, in East Texas. Uh, he got together with our local uh, representatives and got us a, a Texas flag that got to flew over the Capitol, which was real cool that we could take something memorable like that. But um, we have... You want to talk about the logo? Okay. So here's the James Beard House. This is uh, pretty much the only thing that says the James Beard House outside is the plaque. Um, it was his house. And... Uh, when he passed away, the, uh, uh, some of his friends made it a foundation for uh, people like us to come in and cook in. And uh, they took most of the furniture out of the house and put tables in its place. Um, the kitchen, 
very small. Do we, uh, you're going to show the kitchen in a second? Uh, Chef Mark? Yeah. Chef Mark was the one to create the uh, logo. Yeah, I, I like uh, I like to have one in, uh, in in print and and other items as well. So we wanted to represent Texas uh, and the James Beard House. So I, we contacted the J the JBH, uh, kind of presented what we could do, and and they they kind of gave their okay. So uh, we feel that it was a, a beautiful logo on all of our coats, and uh, we wanted to make sure so that Texas pictures, was represented. In, okay, are you uh, are you the one thing. doing this? The flipping. Yeah. Got next. There we go. Big radio kick. So the whole trip in New York was just absolutely phenomenal. Um, not only did we cook together, have fellowship together, but we took special moments off to, as a team, to uh, to get particular shots of the city and bridges, uh, particular shots of the James Beard House. We had a, a team member that was actually a full-time photographer, Ryan Mitchell, uh, and did all of our photography. It was was really nice. So if you're competing as a team, I know we got your team out there. Um, try to get someone, uh, a professional photographer or a student photographer that goes along with you. Because that way you're not even concentrating on the moment. You're concentrating on the food. So that was absolutely vital. Uh, the menu signed by everybody. That was another thing I like to do is I did typesetting and, and made sure the James Beard house uh, had a nice menu. It was really kind of daunting with the, with the James Beard of how much you have to do to cook there. It's not only an invitation, but wine service you have to take care of, the menu you have to take care of, the, the dinner guest, uh, final dinner gift has to be taken care of, or suggested, table settings, uh, not settings, but the centerpieces have to be taken care of. So there's a lot more to the honor of cooking at the James Beard House than just showing up and cooking and writing a menu and that kind of stuff. Rick? So this was uh, our menu that, uh, that Mark created. You wanna go back? This was the menu that uh, Chef Mark created. Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous, but we have our uh, some of our sponsors on the menu. Um, the Beef Loving Texans, Texas Beef Council. Can we give them a round of applause? <laughs> and then we have uh, New Chef. They uh, donated uh, um, all our uh, uniforms, our uh, chef coats, uh, free of charge, which was uh, huge. Um, and then uh, Hinkle Knives, um, uh, it's kind of a funny story. Uh, we're, uh, we're all going to get together in, uh, in about another month and have a dinner uh, as a closing ceremony of our, of our travels. And uh, in my trunk, I have uh, two knives, a uh, Hinkle Chef knife. Uh, it's on their Japanese line and a pairing knife that uh, Hinkle's gave us. So uh, got a little mem memorable thing there. Uh, the Texas quail. Kelly, would you like to talk about Texas quail? I love it. Kelly uh, had the uh, quail consomme dish and uh, let you take it from there. I, I did the first course. I did a chilled quail consomme uh, for two reasons. One, I could do it in advance and travel with it. That was fun. Um, you don't know anything. You know, sending a kid to college is, is much easier than putting that ice chest on the uh, baggage baggage going out and you don't see it anymore and you don't know what's going to happen to it so um, anyway so yeah. we, we had that uh, we were working on the, the, the dish and okay. the we'll Texas quail well. farms came up they donated a whole you, you think about it you know making you know three three gallons for one of these things it's not a whole lot well, but we made seven of them the dry age so, so I can suddenly start we're a whole lot of cook. little bitty well, we'll quails little bitty pieces do, of quails to make now? enough for all no, of no, those no, things so yeah, uh, Texas nice. uh, a, quail farms came nice. up they donated I got a bigger uh, <laughs> to us for that so that was that was a, a great a opportunity we kind of took the consomme it was a chilled consomme as in New York in the summertime so I want something cool starter as we're going off yeah, just a lot of on. heavy dishes coming behind us. So it also gave us the al to alternate cold, hot, cold, hot, well, uh, and we don't have to cold as we went through our deal, which gave us room in the kitchen to, to organize our menu. So that, that was good. Uh, made a quail and wild mushroom sausage that we garnished in the middle, um, and then just a brunoise of roasted vegetables. Then a wild, uh, not a wild, a multi-grain cracker that we used for a little garnish. 
crunch on that. But anyway, they stepped up really well. Um, Dish came up, and I'm kind of, we'll all probably talk about this a little bit. I remember talk, hearing the students earlier talking about how their dishes evolved from day one to the final competition. You know, we were all talking about you know, the first day we, we did our first uh, preview dinner. We're all like, oh, this is good. This is good. We look back at those when we got finished, and we're like, holy cow, how did we ever put that on a plate? You know, it was just the evolution of it. And that's what it's all about. And it, you guys understand it now because you've seen it. We, we all know that. But, you know, we'd have a, a, a dinner. We'd all get together, and generally it's Patrick going, well, you need to fix this. You need to fix that. It's, you know. We, we trust Patrick for that. You know, that's, that's why we have him around us, to make us all look better. And so, but uh, anyway, so it was a great, great opportunity. It was simple, it was quick, but again, it was light and, and flavorful as we go forward, so. Cool, cool. All right, Very we're nice. gonna pass the mic over to Chef Patrick. He's gonna talk a little bit about the dry age process and uh, show us how to fabricate this beautiful chunk of beef. Okay, so, um, you know, what we serve for the entree, and we'll kind of get into the entree later on, but I just want to kind of get going on this because we want to cook some, and it's going to take a little while, so while we're talking about the rest of the menu, it'll be cooking. So um, we decided we were going to take dry-aged beef uh, to the James Beard House, and we were talking about how long should we dry-age the beef, and we, we, you know, we thought about 45 days, we thought about 50 days, we thought about 90 days. We said, you know what? People don't go to the Beard House for a good steak. They go to the Beard House for something extraordinary. So we said, let's take it to 100 days. And, uh, you know, because, I mean, it's rare to find a 100-day dry age out there. So uh, a, a buddy of mine in uh, uh, Dallas has a dry age um, room, and he dry ages uh, meat at his club there. And he said he would dry age all the meat for us. So we got these uh, short loins in, and he held them in there and rotated them out, rotated them out. And we weren't able to get 100 days on the preview dinners uh, because we didn't, you know, we, we didn't realize how long it was. Well, we knew it was going to be 100 days, but uh, <laughs> but we didn't plan ahead enough to, to get get that going. Um, so we gradually got farther and farther in, and we had some that we kept. This is 100 days. Actually, this is 98 days today. So we brought a piece to show you what it looks like. Uh, and it, when it dries, it's a controlled environment. So the humidity is controlled, the airflow is controlled, the temperature is controlled. There's black lights in there to make sure that the wrong kind of mold doesn't start growing. Uh, but it, uh, it basically starts to mold and kind of decay. But what happens is it seals off, and you can see how hard it is here, and it, and it seals off, and then the flavor just intensifies. Some of that nuttiness kind of permeates into the meat. Um, but it, it doesn't evaporate as much of the moisture as initially I thought 100 days, 200 days, it's going to be like beef jerky. But it, um, it doesn't because what we did is we took this one and we ran it off on the bandsaw. And you can see the difference here. And it's, it's still very moist, but it's much more dense. And so when you cook this, you can't eat a, a normally sized portion, you know, a 10-ounce steak or something like that. It's going to be much richer because of the... Uh, so... Um, uh, we're going to kind of trim this up, and I wanted to make sure you guys saw what it looked like. I went ahead and uh, trimmed this already off of the bone so that um, it's not going to be a, a, a hard process. That is one sharp, well, is a sharp knife there. Sharp knife I've got wow, there. So, boom! Oh, look Whoa. at that. Whoa. So, um, you can see then, you know, when you cut it off of the bone, it's... Uh, Nice and moist and all that stuff. So we're gonna just trim this up. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Um, if you'd like to uh, uh, smell that, you know, you can kind of get a, get an idea of um, what that's like. Uh, and then, you know, we're gonna trim off the outside of this stuff. So, you know, as as you do this, you know, you kind of have to have the bone and the fat on there for the dry age process. And then. After we get that done, what we do is we take this fat, we cut it up into chunks, and render it down, and it's got all of that dry age flavor in this fat. So then you take that fat and you know you render it down, you kind of clarify it a little bit, you put it in a, a container, let it set up, and then scoop that when you're sauteing vegetables, put that into the pan instead of oil or butter, 
And when you saute those vegetables in that dry aged fat, it gives it that, that nutty dry aged flavor into it. There's a lot of different things that we can do with this. We made candles out of this dry aged fat and um, we put little wicks in them and uh, we served that as the butter service for the entree uh, where the, the candle wick melted the, the, the fat and it all cooled up on a plate and people dipped their uh, bread into that and that was a big hit at the Beard House. So I'm gonna cut this face off because it's uh, not what we're, we're looking for. You gotta get all that stuff off of there. Well, this one's got a little bit of a, a seam in there. but um, And then I'm gonna cut this into some steaks and we'll cook it up and give you a chance to, to sample and see what you think. So that's kind of the dry age process. Um, again, like I say, it, it, it is molding and it is kind of decaying, if you will, but it's a very controlled environment and there's a lot of things like that that um, if done right and held right, uh, they, they really increase the flavor and the palatability of it. So not only flavor, but tenderness out real good too. So I'm going to cut some steaks here. Oh. Oh. Hey, Chef, what was the... Uh, huh? What was the quality grade on the... Oh, this was... Um, uh, started out as USDA Prime. Uh, so it's got great marbling in there. And it... Um, it was a great piece of meat to begin with. And then you put that dry age on it and it just... It's amazing what it does. <laughs> You know, do we have salt and pepper in the back? Perfect. So I'm going to get these things going. And then we're going to, uh, so what we did is we cut them into big steaks at the Beard House, probably about this thick. Yeah. So we cut them into big steaks there. And then we grilled them. And then we finished them in the oven. And then after that, we cut them into medallions. So you still got that great grilled flavor coming off the charbroiler. Um, but you also kind of had that roasted texture to it where it was, cooked on the outside and then kind of the, uh, the fresh face on the inside there. But I'm gonna do these a little bit thinner so we can cook them a little bit quicker and then uh, we'll have some samples yeah. for you guys to, hey, you to taste. You got much so while I'm got. cooking this, uh, who, who are we gonna run to next? We're gonna do a salad. How much salad? swag you got? Can you go get them? All right, uh, I got a first hand to go up. I got a, I got a couple of swag questions for y'all. Um, how many days was this steak? 98. 98. Wow. All right. Robert's Damn. got something for you. The next one. How many days was the James Beard House steak? First hand to go up. What's that? 100? 101? 101? I can't catch. You got one more? All right. Y'all want to come up here? I guarantee I won't throw it that far. And uh, one hat for you. Salt and pepper. We got a beef there. loving uh, chef towel for you. All right. Um, so a part of this journey was us getting up there and being able to afford it. We did three dinners. Uh, the first one was in uh, Waco. The second one, uh, I don't know where he's on. I'm sorry. The first one was at uh, Morris right Salerno's uh, in Salerno's in uh, Highland Village. So I'm gonna, the uh, second one was down in Waco at TSTC, in the back, huh? and the third one was at back, uh, Park City Club in uh, Dallas. So we got used to uh, packing up and traveling hey, with our equipment, with what we needed to take right with us. There's nothing Later. worse than getting uh, to where you need to go do something and you're missing a spoon, you're missing a knife, you're missing your molds, you know, stuff like that. Um, I actually got to compete with uh, Miss uh, Chef uh, Allison Hodges up in um, um, Madison, Wisconsin, uh, was a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. 
Um, we both placed medals up there, which was really exciting. But um, when I got up there, uh, I made a uh, grimalada, and when I uh, opened up all my stuff, my grimalada had started molding from the uh, moisture from the lemons. Um, so needless to say, I didn't take a zester up there to make some new, so I ended up having to run all over town to find a zester. And it's uh, having that equipment when you go away from your kitchen is uh, very important. Um, so my, uh, my salad here, it did not start like this at all. That's uh, the picture up there on the, uh, on the uh, uh, screen. But uh, it's always been a uh, buttermilk panna cotta with uh, black pepper. We made it with honey, uh, a little bit of vanilla bean paste, and some sugar. Uh, very, uh, very tart uh, panna cotta. It's more along the savory line. Uh, and uh, the first one that we made, it was on a different mold. Uh -huh. It just didn't look right on the plate. It didn't come out of the mold right. The second yeah, one, I had a different right mold, keeps, and uh, it just didn't look right. So uh, we uh, we got these molds online, there, and uh, they, there, they, they really hand. turned out great. And uh, For my bone in the So hand. I'm real happy with that. We did a uh, an egg roll wrapper, uh, and then... Uh, like I said, uh, the Fresh Origins came in and gave us all the uh, microgreens. We got some uh, the celery leaves, and then we got the Hearts on Fire, which is a little bit more uh, bitter, and then uh, the uh, Petite Arugula, which had the uh, pepper, and then we made a uh, honey and uh, grapefruit vinaigrette with it. Marcus. And like I said, I'm from uh, uh, Tyler, so the uh, Yellow Rose of Texas Foam. And Salt then we did some yeah. Winona black, Tex, uh, black Texas pepper. peaches. Just a little bit. But that's, uh, that's pretty much the salad. I did yeah, want to talk pepper. about Just a little um, cup. Yeah. Thank you. sponsorship and how we got to where we got. Um, the uh, dinners were, uh, were very important because we got to practice. Um, when I did my certification, it wasn't just, OK, I'm ready to go cook in front of these judges. It was about practice, practice, and practice. And from getting from one plate to another to another, it was over and over and over again doing the same thing and always having my mentors around to try and test and tell me, this isn't working, this is working, this is garbage, we need a new plate, we need to do it like this. And um, that's how these Let's dishes uh, evolved. I remember trying. Uh, uh, Patrick Mitchell's plate the first time. It was a good dish, but from when we went from our first one to the uh, to the James Beard House dish, it was amazing. Kelly's dish uh, evolved. I'd have to say that uh, Chef uh, Mark Schneider's dish, uh, I do want to get him up here to talk to you because uh, Chef's a, uh, a classically trained savory chef, and for him to step way outside the box and do dessert was... Uh, was uh, probably the most uh, interesting to watch on how his, uh, his stuff uh, evolved. Hey, Chef, do you want to come up here and talk about your, uh, your uh, pastry work? I'll take the beef. How you doing? Can you smell it out there? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to be tasting it here in just a minute. Well, until we can find the uh, mic, I do want to talk about uh, F. Dick Knives. We were in Chicago as a uh, team building uh, at the uh, um, National you know TRA show, with, uh, and I went too. around and talked Not to Eftik. Eftik was my very first knife so, in um, culinary school, which was oh, okay. kind Let of exciting look. to see them at the okay. show. And I went up and told him the story about what we were doing no, and good. where we were he's going and how Eftik was my very off, first knife. And, and the, uh, that, that the vice I, president yeah. of the company had said, what it's can I do to show my support for y'all? I was like, know? well, give us a knife. And uh, he didn't blink twice. Uh, when we got there, the knives were waiting for us at the hotel. And uh, they gave us this big, crazy looking knife here. Um, this is one of their lines, the uh, Ajax line. So um, that was kind of cool. Chef Snyder, you want to talk about your pastry work? Sure. My, uh, I got chosen on the team uh, to do pastry. And I think if anybody knows me, uh, I've never worked as a professional pastry chef. 
Uh, I've definitely taught Whoa. baking and pastry, and I love the craft. Uh, so when they said, hey, could you uh, come up with a pastry plate for Texas, I definitely said, sure, no problem. Uh, what I did was a white chocolate Bavarian dome uh, seasoned with tequila and lime, and I inlaid that with a prickly pear, uh, gelée that set on top of a white chocolate cake that set on top of a pecan uh, sandy. Off to the side there, we had a little instant praline uh, that uh, had chopped pecans. Uh, we did a cayenne candied pecan. I chopped those. Those went on top. The green uh, cylinder there is avocado ice cream. On top of that was a little margarita whipped cream, and then one solid pecan. In the back hey, was a uh, uh, prickly pear gel. Uh, the sale is a corn masa uh, churro twill. And then we had some Texas berries that I flavored oh, with angave, uh, lavender, and mint. Uh, so we had a huge amount of flavor on that plate. I always consider the pastry chef the closers. So we close out the evening. We close out the inning at the baseball game as well. Uh, we're gonna uh, Ghost Rose. We have any Houston fans have in here? Uh, maybe, maybe so. They won last night. It's a ghost rose. Uh, but it was a real joy uh, to be pastry. Uh, the, the menu, the item itself kind of fought me at the James Beard House. So for competitive teams, no little, uh, I kind of know. That was kind of the challenge of going into that kitchen plates? is it's so small. And we had a freezer, no disposable but the freezer plates? was never a freezer. It was between 9 and 32, uh, 28, 32 degrees all night yeah, long. Yeah, we have two things? Now, I've got avocado ice cream that's struggling. I've got these Bavarian domes that I have to glaze with the white chocolate glaze that I, I did kind of a pink color with. Um, and so my temperatures were never, never correct. Toothpicks if you go back and look at the archive slice it up, uh, video it that we have at the James Beard Foundation website, you'll well, see me can put it on going there. back and forth from station to station as I glaze and I go and I yeah, glaze and the, I go. Uh, I did uh, 90 of these. The How room was 85. These, uh, I uh, glazed them. I put the little chocolate balls on top, and I went for a, a pan of 15, and somebody had moved them and scraped all 15 tops off my dough, off my domes. Um, however, culinary gods were messing with me a little bit, and then they smiled because when the team said, chef, is dessert up? I said, yes, dessert's up. Let's rock and roll. So whatever problems have in the kitchen, practice, practice, practice. Because you're practicing for the mistakes that aren't going to happen. Because they're going to happen in practice. But it gives you the confidence. I lost 15, right? But I made my count. Luckily, we had one vegan that didn't do dairy. So I didn't have to do one dome. So I was like, yes. One person doesn't get one. So, but uh, it was a great plate, lots of great flavors. We really wanted to represent Texas. That tequila, that lime, that white chocolate, the prickly pear, the churro, the avocado ice cream, the margarita whipped cream. Uh, we, we gave it to them. And I uh, was very happy to close the night and make a big success. Uh, one of my favorite photos, and I don't know if it made the reel or not, uh, Chef Rick, our captain, I pulled him aside at, uh, at 8.08 and uh, we took a picture with the clock. And I said, boys, we're closing it. And we closed it at, at 10.08 with uh, Chef Rick and I at the clock. So uh, extremely honored to cook at the James Beard House. I never thought I even walked by the James Beard House, much cooked there. I don't think Chef Rick uh, mentioned that there was about 3,000 applications this year to cook. And we were one of those applications that got picked. We did such a fantastic job. Um, one quick story, I know we're running late. We had a patron that went to a family table of ours that was the house and said, obviously you're with the chefs. We've been listening to your conversation. Uh, I've been doing this for 25 years with the James Beard House. Uh, your chefs cook some of the most amazing food that's ever been here. You have done things that we have never seen here. And you can tell your chefs that you just beat every chef in New York. So we took Texas to New York, wearing our boots on, and, and we had a great time. So thank you so much to the team. Rick, your leadership, Texas Beef Council, uh, new Chef Coates, Patrick Mitchell, uh, Kelly Cook, Morris, uh, everybody. It's a brotherhood and a fellowship, and we just had a bang-up time. So thank you so much. Uh, I want to hit on uh, what, uh, what Chef Mark was uh, talking about with his domes. I had a uh, little mishap, too. Uh, you know, we got there at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, my dish doesn't take but about 20 minutes to make, okay? By 10 o'clock, and that was with me smoking a couple cigarettes and totally goofing off, 
I was done. At about 5.30, I uh, heard this crash, bang, boom, and uh, all the bulls had fallen on all my panacotas. okay? So a few of them were broke, and of course, instantaneously in my head is, how can I recover them? And then I'm looking at glass shards everywhere all over my, my panacota, and I'm like, well, there's nothing I can do at this point. And it was funny, because everybody was kind of looking at me, waiting for me to pull a Gordon Ramsay and just started losing my cool. And it was, uh, went back to the practice, practice, and practice was, I know this recipe by heart, in my head, I can do it in my sleep, thank you, Chef. I wouldn't be where I'm at without having these mentors forcing me and telling me that I have to practice, I have to do this over and over and over again. I ran uh, three blocks in New York City to a little grocery store Went in, found uh, organic buttermilk. This stuff was amazing, by the way. Never had buttermilk like this. And uh, ran back and uh, threw the panna cottas together in about uh, about 10 minutes with, uh, with a couple of the chef's help. One was working with the gelatin, one was working on flavor, and one was working uh, to put it into the molds. And you, uh, we had panna cotta right again. You know, so it was real cool that we didn't have an issue of what do we do? We can't, we can't do this dish now. Things aren't going to work out. And it doesn't matter where you're at. There's always going to be hiccups along the way. It's about how we recover from the hiccups. And I wouldn't have had that recovery without having the mentorship in my life. So yeah. whether you're a chef that's been around forever or you're an uh, up-and-coming cook or a chef, Find somebody that you can get underneath their wing or find somebody that you can put underneath your wing to carry you on to the next stage in life because uh, it's, it really is amazing to have the, the fellowship that we have amongst each other. So, yeah, I'd just like to add to that uh, real quick that... Can't um, hear you. For, huh? Can you are. Hear, okay. I just want to add to that real quick. Uh, you know, no matter where you're at, in whatever country you're in, if you're in a competition, if you're in, yeah, we're good to go. You can pass that. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, there's always going to be something's going to happen. Always. We call it a curveball. And it's just a matter of if you're, if you're prepared and, and, and prepped, and, and as Chef Rick talked about, um, uh, it's, it's how you recover from it. You know, it's not what's going to happen. It's how you're going to deal with it. So uh, uh, just be prepared. And uh, I think the Culinary Institute has a thing called uh, preparation happen. is everything. Good little uh, motto, but that's kind of our. Um, oh, so let me talk about the entree. We didn't. We didn't even talk about the entree well, yet, huh? <laughs> oh, uh, um, so the entree. Um, that is amazing. Sorry, let me get this here. Juan and I. Well, <laughs> it just dawned on me. We did. Juan and I um, did a competition in Kuala Lumpur um, a, a year ago. Uh, today was the award ceremony. On did, the 12th, uh, did, we cooked we in Kuala Lumpur for the Global uh, Chefs Challenge. We're the USA representatives, and we were given some uh, veal so product <laughs> that uh, we had to use in that competition. Right. So that kind of inspired this entree. Instead of the veal loin, you know, we went with Texas beef, um, and we had uh, were given veal tongue, and we were given veal shank. So uh, for this dinner, we uh, did the beef tongue, and we did... Um, uh, uh, just the, uh, the, the tongue and the, the, the dry-aged beef. And we took the tongue, cooked it off, uh, diced it up, and mixed it with some mushrooms. And there's a little pile of a mushroom ragu there. Uh, in the top, uh, 12 o'clock of that plate, there's a little semolina souffle, semolina mascarpone uh, souffle that, that we did as the starch on the plate. Uh, we had some baby carrots. We had some haricot vert. We had um, a pea puree. And then we also had a little uh, 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 pickled grape tomato that's sitting right there on the front in front of the beef there. And that all that richness on that plate with the dry age and all that stuff, and that, that uh, pickled tomato really helped kind of cut through that richness. But it, um, it ate real well, and um, uh, it, it was interesting to take that, that dish. One, one went with us to help us in the kitchen, and it was interesting to take that dish and um, kind of morph it into the James Beard House dinner too. One, one thing I'd like to, to talk about is the team that actually came together. 
I've known Patrick around 25 years or so now, Ooh. Patrick. Something like that. I hate, hate yeah, to say we're that old, but we're old, there. Um, Morris, almost that long. Um, Mark, I know 15 years. Robert and Rick are the newcomers to my world, probably five or six years that I've known them well. well we've always done stuff. Stuff. We've never done stuff together. And for me, it was such a great honor, great opportunity to go as a group with these guys that I've loved and enjoyed forever and come together and, and go do this big We've event. That's a bucket list We've thing. I don't care who you together. are. It's a bucket list. And so I, I think I kind of got chosen for title more than talent. But anyway, I was just glad to be along. I carried a lot of luggage, um, did a lot of stuff like that, found toothpicks and a container for them. So that's you know, kind of what I did. But I, I enjoyed it so much, you know, getting to know these guys even better than we already did. At the Moxie, you learn more things about people than you want to. And, uh, <laughs> but it was just so much fun for that, that whole team to grow over those, those months and become such a cohesive yeah. group. So that, that for me was, was very special. Those that not in our industry, and I learned early how to explain it, getting invited to the James Beard house. If you're a, a musician, Sure. Somebody that plays music. Musician. Thank you. A musician, you get invited to Carnegie Hall. If you're a culinary, you get invited to James Beard. And once I put it in that context for people in the other world, they go, oh, hey, let me ask you this. I get it this now. And so for us, that was, once you, once you get that awe moment of what you're actually doing, it's, it's, a, it's a whole lot of fun. So I don't know, that guy in the gray got the samples going around. Anybody else? Uh, Patrick, talk about this dish real quick. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that. Uh, we're going to have Patrick talk about uh, uh, Chef Morris's dish. You know, he's in California with Uncle Peter, so we want to uh, definitely showcase his dish. Uh, when we were in Dallas doing our uh, <clears throat> second dinner, third dinner, uh, Chef Morris, uh, his dish got the, uh, the applause of the night. So... It was by far uh, the best, the best thing we served that night. So, good. So, uh, yeah. So, so, you know, a couple of things. First of all, we joke around about Uncle Peter. Um, Peter Mondavi. We were out there uh, last year, September, I think, and we went to uh, Charles Krug. He's owned by uh, the Peter Mondavi side of the family. Um, Morris sells a lot of that wine in his restaurant, and. Uh, they set us up with a tasting, and we went over there, and we were going to have a tasting at the Charles Krug, and they said, Peter Mondavi is going to come over. He wants to meet you guys. And we thought, wow, he wants to come over and meet us, you know. So we stood around, and we waited, and so he says hello to us when he's talking to us and the other, and then, well, he, he did our personal tasting with Peter Mondavi. So we got talking about what, what was going on and this, that, and the other, and, and we kind of became, I hate to say became friends, but, you know, um, uh, a very uh, gracious guy who, who uh, decided to support us with the wines for this dinner, too. So um, we really want to uh, uh, give a shout-out to the uh, C.K. Mondavi side, Charles Krug. But uh, Morris's dinner, uh, his course was, as you can see, it was the red snapper with the uh, uh, gulf crab inlay and mesquite smoked shrimp. So what he took was the snapper, and he's got it wrapped around. He's got a crab meat kind of a stuffing inside of that with a little bit of spinach wrapped around it. And he's made a roulade, and then he has a smoked um, uh, shrimp on the, on the outside. He made a beautiful shrimp broth with the shells from those shrimp. And um, at uh, about 3 o'clock on that plate, you can see a little white flower. Under that flower is a thing called carrot ginger jam. And uh, Morris has been making this carrot ginger jam for years and years. and. Um, all over the world and all of a sudden it dawned on me one day before we I think it was like the day that we were getting ready to leave I said you know um, Morris that carrot ginger jam has been all over the world I think that would go perfect on that dish and he said ah great idea so that was a last minute addition that we put on there but again when you look at the the, the morph of these things initially he started out with a piece of snapper that was corn uh, uh, cornmeal crusted and fried and laid on the plate he had a, a shrimp on there he had a butterfly, and then he had some other stuff. He had an, an actual crab cake that he was making. Black and then they just kind of just kind of morphed and uh, like what? Black eyed peas. Yeah, he had black eyed peas on there, exactly. Yep. And, um, and it morphed into this thing, and he had a polenta, creamy polenta up there. And it was a really, really good dish. The, uh, the kind of relish there on the bottom at about 5 o'clock is 
Uh, he there was at a Waco. There's a, a cheese uh, company there that makes a smoked pecan cheddar, and he had that, and um, he had something else mixed in with that cheese. Oh, I think it was they're, actual pecans. The pecans. The pecans and that cheese uh, all tossed together, and, and this this plate really ate very very well. But um, it was it was a nice uh, collaboration of everybody getting two, together two and kind Three of putting Clark, their best done. foot forward and uh, okay. showcasing Texas. Texas uh, we need to do questions. ingredients. You need That's to it, I think, huh? What else we got? You want me to do that? Robert? Yep. That's it? Yep. All right. Do you, uh, do you all have any questions for us about the James Beard House or our journey? So One question. Guy. Any question. I don't think we can give it to him because of all the moon. We served 80 people. The max there okay. is 80. That's kind of a cool story. I just don't think so so means, most dinners do not right. sell out at the James Beard House because uh, people come in at parties, and you have we a should, bunch of different tables that, set up. They're yeah, not all they twos and fours. Some are nine, some are eight. So the numbers that that add up. But we had actually 80 people on our uh, on the website. It says sold out, okay. which was uh, did the, did another honor it? and. Uh, uh, another fold in our tote because uh, we can actually it? brag about Did going to the James it? Beard House oh, okay. and selling out. On the uh, James oh, Beard House uh, Foundation what, what website, there? there is a uh, thing so called the Kitchen in? Cams, and they have an archive footage, so you can actually go on there and actually watch us cook. And it ran live. If y'all ever get a chance, it was uh, it was really cool. We got to watch it the other day, and uh, you know, my uh, having my uh, I really wanted my folks to, to uh, go up there. And uh, my mom took a spill in the kitchen, broke her hip, all this and that. So my dad wouldn't let her and go up go? there. And she got to uh, sit and watch me cook on the, uh, walk over there, right? on, the, uh, on the cam. And that was, uh, that was a really cool deal. So the, the cam was kind of, uh, it, it was uh, it really special yeah. to me. Um, Where are you going to be, upstairs? Y'all yeah, got any other questions okay. for us? Man, we uh we I practiced my dish over ten times, making the panna cotta, putting the putting the gelatin in. Uh, but we had three dinners. The elevation from the get go to when we finished was amazing. Uh, and I can guarantee that. Uh, how many times did you practice making your dessert? I did. I did five. Five times. I know. Uh, um, Chef Patrick's uh, dish was a, uh, a a takeoff of his global competition, and I know how many times you practice. Up we, twenty. We, yeah, we practiced um, uh, twelve full practice runs going to the global competition, but that was a five-hour cook, so it was hard to do. These people don't it was hard to do twelve of them, believe me. Yeah. But more than that was a lot. But um, and then when we got back, you know, I think each individual right competitor or each individual team member. Uh, developed and practiced on their own, but we didn't really have actual run through since it wasn't a competition as much as it was a development of, of uh, but after each dinner we would take feedback and we'd go back to our properties and, and work it again and work it again and um, but it was a it was a good process. Well we appreciate y'all coming out. Uh, y'all have a good time here in Houston. Thank you. Thank you all.